Hello and welcome to a UTM calculus video on concavity and inflection points. So you might already know that um, first derivative of a function helps you find minimum and maximum points and also intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. But what does the second derivative tell you about the graph of a function? Well, that's the topic of this next video. Let's start by having a look at a few graphs. Suppose that we have a function which is twice differentiable on an interval i. Let's look at these two parts of the graph of a function and let's think about how the derivatives of the function might be able to help us tell the difference between these two types of behaviors. In the first picture, the first derivative of f is increasing. In other words, the slope of the tangent lines gets larger and larger as x moves from left to right. In this case, we say that f is concave up on this interval. In the second picture, the first derivative is decreasing. In other words, the slopes get smaller and smaller if f moves from left to right. And f is called concave down on this interval. The easiest way to compute the difference between these two types of behaviors is to look at the second derivative. If the first derivative is increasing, that means that the second derivative is positive. So that would be the easiest way to compute that a function is concave up. Similarly, if the second derivative is negative, then the function will be concave down. If we compare these two pictures, we see that in both of them, the function itself is increasing. But in the first picture, it's concave up, and in the second picture, it is concave down. This means that the second derivative helps us tell the difference between the, these two types of curves. If f is a continuous function at c and f changes concavity, either changing from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up, then we say that f has an inflection point at x equals to c. Again, the easiest way to check for this is to use the second derivative. If the second derivative changes sign at a point where f is continuous, then f has an inflection point at x equals to c. Here we have the graph of a function. Let's try to figure out where this is concave up and where is concave down. The function starts off being concave down on the first portion. This is because it starts off with a very large positive slope, but then the slope gets smaller and smaller. Uh, so therefore it's concave down up until roughly around a. At a, the slope is negative, uh, but it starts to get less and less negative. In other words, it's increasing. And it increases from a to b, so that means that the curve is concave up from a to b. At b, the slope starts to get smaller again, and it gets smaller and smaller, and then turns negative, and keeps getting smaller until around c, so that means that the curve is concave down from b to c. And from c onwards, uh, the curve is, is bending upwards, so therefore it's concave up. And so in summary, this curve is concave up from a to b and from c to infinity. It's concave down on negative infinity to a and from b to c. And there are three inflection points where the graph changes concavity. And these happen when x is equal to a, b, and c. So to summarize, we've seen that a function is concave up if the second derivative is positive, it's concave down if the second derivative is negative, and you have an inflection point at a point where the second derivative changes sign, and also the function has to be continuous. To figure out where a second derivative changes sign, we need to look for places where the second derivative is either zero or undefined. These are the only places where a function could possibly change from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So let's see how this would work in a few examples. We're going to do a number of examples where we're looking for intervals where a function is concave up or concave down, and also we want to find all the inflection points of the function. So the first step is to find the second derivative. So differentiating once using the power rule, we get x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 2. Differentiate a second time, we get x squared minus x. To find the inflection points, we need to find out where the second derivative changes sign. The only places where this might happen is where the second derivative is zero or undefined. So let's try to find those x values. So if the second derivative is zero, that means x squared minus x is zero. And if we factor this, we see that x is equal to zero or one. 
Where is the second derivative undefined? Well, x squared minus x is a polynomial, so this is never undefined. So x equals to 0 or 1 are the possible inflection points, but we still need to check whether the second derivative actually changes sign at any of those values. So let's take the number line and divide it up at 0 and 1, so we end up with three smaller intervals. Now let's check the sign of several different factors uh, at these different intervals. So we have x and x minus 1 because those are the factors of the second derivative. On the interval from negative infinity to 0, x is negative, and on the other two intervals, x is positive. x minus 1 is negative on the interval from minus infinity to 0 and on the interval from 0 to 1, but it's positive on the interval from 1 to infinity. Now, looking down each column, we can find the sign of the second derivative. So a negative number times a negative number is positive. Positive times negative becomes negative, and a positive multiplied by a positive number is a positive number. Now we can read from this interval that the second derivative is positive on the interval from minus infinity to 0 and from 1 to infinity. This means that the function is concave up on these intervals. Also, it's concave down on the interval from 0 to 1 because that's when the second derivative is negative. To see the inflection points, we need to find out where the second derivative changes sign. This happens when x equals to 0 and when x is equal to 1. So to find the y values of those inflection points, we calculate f of 0 is 1 and f of 1 is 35 over 12. So this gives us the two inflection points. Here we have a similar example, but this time f of x equals x to the power of 4 over 5. So again, the first step is to find the second derivative. Using the power rule, we bring down the 4 over 5 and multiply in front, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, so the new exponent becomes negative 1 over 5. Differentiating again, we get negative 4 over 25 times x to the power of negative 6 over 5. Another way of writing that is negative 4 divided by 25 times x to the power of 6 over 5. To find the possible inflection points, we need to find out where the second derivative is 0 or undefined. This is because those are the places where the second derivative might change sign. This time the second derivative is actually never equal to 0, because the numerator is never equal to 0. To find out where the second derivative is undefined, we need to set the denominator equal to 0. And this happens when x is equal to 0. So the only place where the second derivative might change sign is when x is equal to 0. So that means that we only have two intervals to check. We should check the sign of the different factors of the second derivative. Negative 4 is always negative. 25x to the power of 6 over 5 is always positive, because something to the power of 6 is always positive. So this means that the second derivative is negative on both of these intervals. Therefore, the function is concave down on both of these intervals. Because the second derivative never changes sign, there are no inflection points. Here's a graph to illustrate what we have just computed. Notice that there is no inflection point at x equals to 0, because the concavity does not change. In fact, the function is not even differentiable at that point. Let's do one more example of finding concavity and inflection points. As usual, the first step is to find the second derivative. Here is the first derivative which we got from using the quotient rule. If you want, you can pause the video and double check this. To find the second derivative, you would use the quotient rule again, and it might also be a good idea to factor as much as possible, because this will make it easier to find the places where the numerator or the denominator is equal to zero. To find the possible inflection points, we should find out where the second derivative is zero or undefined. These are the places where the second derivative might change sign. To find where the second derivative is equal to 0, we should set the numerator equal to 0. x squared plus 12 is never equal to 0, so the only solution is when x is equal to 0. To find out where the second derivative is undefined, we should set the denominator equal to 0. Because we have factored as much as possible, it makes it easy to see that the solutions are x equals to negative 2 and x equals to plus 2. So the potential inflection points are where x equals to negative 2, 0, or 2. So these are the places where we should break up the number line. 
we should look at the factors of the second derivative and find the sign of each of those on these different intervals. 4x times x squared plus 12 is negative if x is negative and positive if x is positive. x minus 2 is negative when x is less than 2 and positive if x is bigger than 2. x plus 2 is negative if x is less than negative 2 and positive otherwise. Now looking down each of these columns we can find the sign of the second derivative. For example looking at the first column three negative numbers multiplied to give you a negative number. Now we can read from this column that f of x is concave up where the second derivative is positive in other words from minus 2 to 0 and 2 to infinity. It is concave down where the second derivative is negative, in other words from minus infinity to negative 2 and from 0 to 2. To find the inflection points we need to see where the second derivative changes sign. This seems to happen at all three places. However, if you plug in for example negative 2 into the function itself, we get division by 0. So negative 2 is not in the domain of the function itself, therefore this cannot be an inflection point. Similarly for x equals to 2. Therefore the only inflection point is at x equals to 0. We plug this into the function to get f of 0 equal to 0, so the only inflection point is 0 comma 0. Now to some general remarks. Remember that the x values where the first derivative is 0 or undefined are possible minimums and maximums. These should not be confused with inflection points and concavity that deal with the second derivative. Concavity is an independent concept from whether the function is increasing or decreasing. For example, a function could be concave up and at the same time either increasing or decreasing because these are separate concepts. Remember that if the second derivative is zero or undefined, this does not necessarily imply that f of x has an inflection point at c. The second derivative must also change sign at that point. Even if the second derivative does change sign at c, f of x must also be continuous at x equals to c. In particular, if f of c is undefined, then f of x can definitely not have an inflection point at x equals to c. And finally, to find the y value on inflection point, Make sure to insert x equals to c in the function itself, not the derivative or the second derivative. So now we've seen several examples of how to compute where a function is concave up, concave down, and how to find inflection points. We've also seen how concavity affects the graph of a function. Concavity is only one out of many features that you can use to help you sketch the graph of a function. But before you start practicing graph sketching, please have a look at our practice problems on concavity that we put together for you. Good luck.